All right, this is the Committee on Legislative Affairs and Elections. This is Thursday, April 13, 2017. We're at 6 p.m. I have Council Napolitano. Here. I have Council Sani. Here. I have Council Hanley. Here. We have three members present. We do have a quorum. Okay, we all please stand for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We received a message from Council McLaughlin. He will be a little late. <laughs> All right, item number one. This order is regulating the licensure of taxi cabs in the city of Everett. Can we ask the city clerk to come before us? Sure. Okay, uh, there you go. Let me make sure it's not the one I wrote on it. There you go. Before we start on this here, um, this is um, this ordinance has been, you know, drafted by our city clerk, and it's an ordinance that is um, sort of like a boilerplate. And I think that what the clerk is looking for is anything that we may want to add into it, add into it, or whatever it is that you may want to put into it, just put it in and see what happens to it. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, you know, what we have here, Mr. Mr. President, is that, uh, as you know, a lot of our licensing has been in uh, our rules for years and years. And when it's in our rules, it doesn't have the, the weight of law. The only ones that need to abide by our rules is, uh, by the rules is the city council. So um, uh, we've, we've been little by little taking them out and putting them into the ordinances. And this is one of them. And while we were doing it, we, we figured it was time to take a really good look at, you know, how we do the taxi business in general in the city of Everett. Um, in, in speaking with, uh, just in a short conversation with Councilor Napolitano, we came up with just a couple of things that, that, we, that don't exist in this that I think the council needs to sit down and, and decide. One was that, uh, uh, so that we don't get in this situation again, perhaps there needs to be a provision in here that uh, no company shall own more than a certain percentage of the uh, total number of licenses. Uh, based on population, I will probably be adding four more. And, uh, but that may be a good idea. Um, my, a recommendation from me, but certainly not something that the council needs to do, but it, it's something I think is in the best interest, is that I'm not, all that crazy about having single licenses. Um, and when I expressed that to Council Napolitano, he basically said that, yeah, if, if you want just a single license, go drive for Lyft or Uber. Um, if we do increase by four, I'd like it to be a, a, an actual company uh, that comes in and does, does the, um, you know, the, does, it takes over the uh, four additional licenses. Uh, this does result in a um, higher cost for the company um, in, in that probably about, about $2,500 a year. I mean, that's certainly not uh, terrible to them, but uh, the thing to make clear, I think, is that this isn't to hurt the industry or anything. We're very sensitive. I was sensitive in writing it, and I, have, I was asked by counselors to remain sensitive to how bad uh, the taxi business has been with Uber and, and Lyft and those, and how difficult it is for them. And so I've tried to keep that in mind uh, in writing this. But it does have things such as, you know, cleanliness of the vehicle, of the drivers and things like that. I mean, that kind of stuff still is in there, and I, um, and I think that's one of the things that bumps, you know, Uber and Lyft up a bit because if you're getting somebody who's usually well groomed come to your house in a clean vehicle. Um, other than that, yeah, I think this is really something that that really needs to be uh, 
uh, looked at by the committee um, and, and, and decisions made on, on um, a few different things, you know, that, that uh, places where you think it maybe it doesn't go far enough, maybe places where you think it may go too far. Um, like I said, it, and I really want to stress that, that we, we understand the problem with it, the taxi business right now. But very quickly, I just want to say that I did call a company in Worcester, and it was a small company. And I know Worcester is a lot bigger than us. However, there's 110 licenses in, in Worcester. And uh, this gentleman only had three. He only had three. Uh, I think they used medallions there. And again, that's another thing that the council may want to decide. Do we use medallions? But anyhow, three, uh, he only has three cabs. And he says he makes a pretty good living with just the three. And that's with Uber and Lyft and everything else. So. He said the stress is on us now to make sure our vehicles are clean and they look good and everything else. And so um, I did speak to him to get a lot of feedback on this. I didn't want to call anybody who may be applying. So I went to, you know, I went to central Massachusetts uh, by, by via phone and spoke to someone there. But um, yeah, again, this is just something that, as, as the, the uh, chairman said, that it's sort of a boilerplate for this committee to go through and decide uh, what they want to do with it. Yeah, I just want uh, to wrap up. Mm -hmm. You had said that in the beginning, no more than eight. What percentage was that number? Uh, none. I don't know. Uh, who, did, did no, no, we mentioned that maybe that's something that? you want to think okay. the, the okay. council may want to consider right. to yeah. prevent this in the future, that no one company can own more than a certain percent. You're right. Okay, yeah. Okay, Peter, you were, you were first. Well, I think the intent here is that this, this is a little more complex than we might, than we might think, uh, than, than uh, similar to the, uh, as opposed to like the livery service. Livery service, you know, it's pretty much we, 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 we know what we're looking to do there. We know how we're looking to regulate on the city level. Um, I think it's fine the way it is. But on, with cabs, you know, we haven't addressed as a, as a city council this issue in detail in God knows how long. Uh, we, have a, we have a template, we have a boilerplate here to, to work from, but we, it's brought up some other questions, some other issues. And I, th I think you know, some of these things that we discussed, first of all, how many licenses altogether, whether we have licenses or medallions, what's the difference? You know, some people may know that, some people may not. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't. Yeah, me neither. Uh, but I'd like to know if it is a difference. You know, the, um, the licenses are issued to the individual vehicles. Are there 18 vehicles out there with Everett cab licensing? Uh, and are all 18 of those vehicles functional to the seat? These are things that we need to take a look at because we aren't looking at it, or we haven't been. And with all the changes going on in the city, the demand for more uh, transportation, um, you know, this is one reason why the Ubers and the, the Lyfts are, are flocking here. Um, but a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the big cab companies outside the Everett are looking for licenses here as well. And we, for one, we need to have some protection for the existing businesses here, but at the same time, we do need to be able to open the door. The, the number of licenses, if I'm not mistaken, are based on population, right? Yes. And in that case, because we've had a serious population growth, there are more licenses available or can be more available than we currently have right now. I think there are four more. But do we do we put that in a position where that where one person can monopolize on that? And I don't mean that in a negative. I don't. Um, you know, I, I know that the uh, present cab company, the owner of the present cab company, is is, is donating a lot of, of, of over the back to the city, giving back a lot over the years. So this is in no way re reflective to that. But um, at the same time, you know, we need to have some competition. You know, in the future years, you know, we have a. We have a very large um, company moving into the city of Everett, and which will be requiring a lot of cab service. And uh, so, uh, you know, with, with the current company that we have that is, is, has 18 cabs for the city of Everett, not counting that, that big company coming in, then there certainly isn't a, a need for more. And um, I don't know if, if he's interested in raising his thing or not, but you know, first come, first serve. Uh, unless we put a limit, like you said, we put a percentage, nobody shall own more than 
75 percent or something with the, the thing whatever. is if if the licenses though are if the number of licenses but the state regular if the state states that the number of licenses are based on population doesn't matter how many hotels we have it doesn't matter how many casinos we have if the population it governs the number of cabs that's going to be a set number i think we govern the number i of think cabs. we do we do, do. not the okay. state well that's one of the questions yeah. that are coming up on this i mean what i'm what i'm what I'm suggest what I would recommend, and I, I don't want really want to make an extra before anybody else had a chance to speak, because only the three of us, is that this is something that I think needs to go to a work group. Mm -hmm. We need to, this is not something we're going to be able to hammer out here to to make a decision to recommend back to the council. We could, but not tonight anyway. No. And that's the thing, is it has to be something where we're scheduled, we, we have a quorum, we go in the back, we sit on the table, and we go through this page by page. You know, by doing that, you know, we may generate questions and ideas we haven't even considered at this point. I mean, as it is, just if, I'm, if I could ask, you know, ask the clerk, you're working on this has already generated questions in your mind. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I still cannot find where I put in here about um, the, the number per population. So that's something the council may have to do. I've looked through this twice and I it, still don't know. But again, there's another question that needs to be checked out. Because I think I think it actually went to 19. I yeah. Went back, and uh, no one ever picked up another cab. Did you find it, Colleen? Did no, no, I think. Oh, I Colleen, think the, you're all right. I think the timing to review one, this is is, one is one perfect. We just need to make sure that we cover all the bases. If I may, as the city council should not issue more than one license for the operation of taxi for 2,000 or part thereof recorded persons living in the city what as section? of its last federal census. What section, Michael? It's uh, section eight, limit, <laughs> limit. Oh, there it is. <laughs> limit you term and fees. You know it's spelled out. I know. 2,000, yeah. <laughs> okay. I know. Do we know? Uh, so that would give us 21 plus. Yeah. Oh, so basically. So about, about we would, yeah. So we'd have three to four. Okay. Three to four new licenses. So I would, yeah, I would suggest basically what the uh, uh, Councilor Napolitano says, that, you know, folks take this home, really go through it, and then figure out, um, you know, what needs to be done for, and come in with their uh, recommendations. I was uh, uh, myself looking at the um, in inspections of the cabs. That, that's what I was going to mm -hmm. zero in on. So that's another topic that we can, we can look at when we go through it, how to do inspections in a... Uh, like you said, Michael, you don't like it, and I don't like it that they have to go to the police station. In some communities, they come in and they have a mall shop at a garage. The yeah. city rents a garage, and when they, they inspect them that day, and then uh, uh, speak with Council Napolitano, he said, "Well, I bet they do that because they don't want them going to their friend mm -hmm. and him passing them all, because right. 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 it's not just admissions we're looking for. We're looking for." The other safety, maybe it's more stringent than just the regular. So again, there's another question that comes up. Yeah. Uh, Council Sandy, you had, you go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Council Handel mentioned we have 18 cabs. Is it one company only yes. in the city right now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I've seen other parking uh, cabs coming into the city and parking around. Are we allowing um, no. parking permits? No. No. What do you mean parking? Parking passes. So. If a Someone's out of Medford, Malden, Boston. Oh, but they own the cab. They're they a single owner. And they're coming into Everett, and they park it. I mean, they can live here. They must live here, and that's where they park their car. But, yeah. But, I mean, but that, are we allowing them to park on the I, I don't know, but that wouldn't be so I, I don't know if that's something we can do, eliminate them for parking on the street because they're taking up space. They should be parking at their garages at night, yeah. bringing their cars back. I wouldn't doubt it. You know? yeah. That usually happens with the single owner. That's usually the owner-occupied cab, and that's what I'm trying to stay away from on here. Right. is by saying a company should own. If you look on most of those uh, vehicles, you'll see it says owner occupied. Yeah. I bet. And then we, we should have, look, uh, maybe look into seeing if we are giving out parking permits. For yeah, that's, are, they paying, yeah. are they paying excise tax to us in the city? Are they paying to other cities? Where are they registering their vehicles? I mean, that's, that's my true. concern is because I know I see them coming around, yep. parking in Everett, taking up spaces that we have people in our community and we have a cab service that's you know, having housing for right. their cars. So I just think if they're going to, off a license, they need to have a spot. But for their they garages. could not; those cabs cannot 
pickup. In you couldn't call them and pick, no. They could drop someone off in Everett that they picked up in Medford, Malden, Boston, or whatever, but they cannot be called and come into Everett. You, mu you cannot do that in a, in a neighboring city. Is that like that in all the cities? Yes. Okay. All right. I do recall. That's considered delivery. I do, I do agree with Council Napolitano and that was I do, the, um, I do try to putting this into um, a private meeting work group and. Yeah, uh, Council, I know that like for years we've been we've been d debating yeah, vehicles that are parked. It's right here. It can't it's be a, a private, private, private meeting. meeting. <laughs> no, <laughs> a work group, a work group. Yeah. But uh, vehicles that are parked on street, uh, indicating they're operating their business from the street because they're parking. Joe's Electric Company or yeah. you know, Harry's Plumber or whatever, whatever it happens to be, and they park those vehicles on the street. And we've got more and more now with uh, a lot of the uh, immigrant people that are picking up the uh, the handyman licenses that they do roofing and siding and everything. You see their trucks are parked on the street. In some places, I see three trucks parked in the same neighborhood, and it's on a small street, and they're taking up the street. Uh, uh, so that's that's been a, a, a problem for years. We've been trying to work it out. and. Since we were getting close to it, now all the the other, you know, foreigners. And I don't mean foreigners; immigrants are coming in, and they're they're getting into business for themselves. And now they're all over the place again, you know. So yes, council. I think the, the the distinction between that though and this is that in the case of the the handyman's, their vehicles are, are in compliance with our our, our 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 residential parking program as far as the dimensions. I I believe only. Um, Vehicles of a certain tonnage, I don't remember it off the top of my head, or a number of axles yes. are restricted from that. If their vehicles fall into that, if they've got a, a, a Yukon or something like that, yeah. uh, then it fits. As long as they're paying excise tax to the city of Everett, then I don't see an issue with that. Though it, it, doesn't, it doesn't alleviate the parking issue, that's another issue. But as far as them on the street for that reason, I don't see that so much as a problem. The taxi, it's a little different. If the if a the city and town issues a license, if we've got, if if we've got a resident from Everett who has a Malden cab, for example, and it's registered and it's licensed in Malden, I'm sure Malden has criteria that requires their vehicles to be registered in Malden. Sure. So that eliminates the that the situation of a residential parking. Then they may live here, but it has to go by way of the where the vehicle is registered. If they have commercial plates, they're not supposed to park yeah, on the street. Yeah. There you go. Yes, uh, just, just so you on the, you know that uh, chapter 18, section 139D1, no person shall park any commercial taxi livery dealer plates or repaired vehicle plates with four wheels or more uh, for a period of more than 24 hours Monday through Friday on any public par, uh, part of a public way in a dwelling zone, municipal parking lot, or in a service zone. So you, you, you are prohibited. But you can park there overnight. Yes. Is that a chat or an ordinance? That, that's an ordinance. They, they have an ordinance. I don't think they've been issuing... Um, the parking passes yeah. for the taxi. Yeah. Is that an ordinance uh, though? Maybe for the livery though. An ordinance? Yes. An ordinance. 18 1 dash, uh, dash 130. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's more than 24 hours. No more than 24 hours, right. And you'd have to have a commercial plate in order to be a commercial vehicle. So if you don't register your car as a commercial. But on this particular one, I, I agree with the council and their approach to it. I, I think a work group would, would be the way to go. Um, how do you feel about uh, uh, doing a, uh, a, a Monday night meeting instead of a Thursday night meeting? Uh, are you talking about in conjunction with the city before a council meeting? No, 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 no. no. Okay. On, a, on an odd night. It's fine with me. Yeah, um, I mean, it would be a night we could spend some time on it and really work this out and so forth. I think, it's, I think it needs to be a time where we have limited or minimal distractions yeah. um, so a night that the council meets later that puts a it puts pressure on us to get things done by a certain time so that I don't think that would work I think a Monday is fine you know and, and that would be my motion is that we refer this item to a separate work group meeting of legislative affairs next next available Monday night I don't know if it's a it's the if there's a fifth night or maybe if the first night uh, of this month, what's, what's in this month? Where are we? Uh, I don't have, we don't have one. Yeah, we have not discussed. Is this which is date Monday? This coming Monday is 17th or 24th. So we have a presentation. We have a community presentation.
business. But oh, we don't need you know I'm not a community business, but work group. I don't need to be there. Like I don't want to report and then you got to report like whatever the work group is looking to do. And if not, we'll find a different a different room, post it as a public meeting. Public's always allowed to be there. Can we ask the city solicitor to come up? Uh, so I think she has something to add to this. Yeah, just be careful. We definitely don't want to be in violation of the public of the open meeting law, uh, but at the same time, this format's not going to allow us to beat this out the way we need to beat it out. We need to actually sit down and go through things. What's your, your recommendation? Uh, that's my, my concern is, is the open meeting law violation because you will be debating um, the language and that you would have to do in an open meeting. So you could either still advertise it as or yeah. you know, put, post a notice for 48 hours notice um, in the location that you will be discussing the, um, yeah. yeah, and then you can be fine and, and that's fine. Um, or I would say that you wouldn't have a quorum, so probably only one of the members of this committee would meet with the um, with the city clerk. But I don't think that would be productive. Right. No. no, I think the, as the long problem as it's we published, run into you're covered. To, the reason we're trying to nail it, sit it down the way we are, is so we get a consensus. Correct. So one person's not doing all the work, and everybody else is just yeah. writing. You know. Yeah, so I think if, as long as you post it, and you know, you post the yeah. meeting, the, whatever the agenda is, working group. Yeah. And the, the location, I think you'll be fine. Okay. I mean, if somebody from the public wanted to sit and watch you um, deliberate over it, that's fine. You just have to make sure that it's a space where they can sit and watch. Okay. But it doesn't have to be a televised no. meeting. That's not no. the thing. It's it just, not. it's advertised and that the public can sit and listen if they choose to. Yes. Right, and, it, and by, advertising, by advertising, I mean just a 48 hours notice because mm -hmm. it's not a public hearing. Right. Group. Work group. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. 48 yeah, hours. You only need 48 hours. You say April 24th? Whoa, 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 whoa. I think we got a date. That's a council meeting. 24th is a, is a council meeting. There's no meeting this Monday. This is the off. How about you What's do it Tuesday? Oh, Patriots. We're open late Tuesday. I don't have it on. So. Yes, if we do it today. Twentieth, there's a committee of the whole at six o'clock. Yeah, Tuesday. And appoint one of you guys to I'll take the notes. Right yeah, we'll advertise it immediately. Yeah. So moved. Second. Aye. <laughs> Didn't quite work that fast. Uh, right. Item number two. This is an ordinance establishing a livery licensing in the city of Everett. Right. This, if I may, if I may, I believe this, but this is a little, this is a little different than the, than the cab licensing. Um, now, there were some recommendations made by one of our colleagues? From no, on this one, on this particular one, it was, uh, we've basically, people have basically been 
licensing livery in Everett simply by getting, uh, and I'm sure uh, the distinguished chairman knows this, but just by getting a business certificate. And, and they open up and we've never, had, and then they come in later and we have, to, they ask us to provide them with a letter that says we do not license livery in the city of Everett. We don't care that you're going to the airport, basically, is what the letter says. And we, it's sent to Massport. Well, we don't know who these people are. And um, so the council had a moratorium on business certificates for them while we worked on this. And the reason was we were getting three to four a week. <coughs> Bless you. And we don't have, and my concern was who are these folks? Are they good folks? You know, um, we're allowing them to come and pick up people. Um, not only that, are they even from Everett? They were using, many of them had to have a home occupation ordinance because they were using residential addresses. And uh, are their cars registered in Everett? And we were under the impression that the message was out there, go to Everett, it's easy. Because when, we, when the moratorium was put on by the city council, it stopped immediately. Nobody came in. When we were getting three to four a week, all of a sudden, miraculously. And I think folks were just telling each other, go to Everett, it's easy, just get a business certificate, use my address, use my house, use this. So I thought it was time for us to uh, you know, take hold of this, and livery is going to be huge with the hotel. Because livery is pre-arranged transportation of, of passengers as well as packages. It's not just packages, it's, it's people. So. But that's what this is. We waited as well, we waited until the state was gonna come up with something with Uber and all that. And they never, they never really came up with anything of, of, that, that really satisfied our needs. So that's, that's why we ended up with this as well. Mr. Chairman. John. That's quite a large, yep. quite a large thing. This might be another one that you, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Sani. Um, can we ask um, the city solicitor here to come up for a moment on this? Thank you. Um, I noticed that um, it, so, it says here that you have read it and you feel it's, a, it's sound. Yep. And Correct. Legally sound. So this is something we, you feel that we should be able to pass and, and go move forward with this and, and put in place now. And okay. I just wanted to yeah. make sure that. Um, yeah, I know the city clerk did a lot of research, um, and, you know, and he was careful in how he worded it. So I, when I reviewed it, we spoke about it briefly. Okay, and you're, you're comfortable, Michael, to, yep. to move forward with this and get this going? Yeah, this one, I'm, this one I'm pretty comfortable with because, you know, uh, it's something we, it's brand new. And if we have any growing pains on it, I know we can always come to the council and, and fix it. And so, as opposed to something that's in place, like the taxi, and there are people affected by it, I think that's the big difference. All right, thank you. Council Member Pavlodano. Um, and I, I agree. This is something that I think we can is ready to go and that we can put it in place. Now, when we're reviewing the taxi ordinance, again, as I said, one of the benefits of a work group is that sometimes you, you get ideas that you can't consider in this type of format. Uh, and if we come up with any ideas that, that would enhance this, we can always amend this. Absolutely. But I don't think there's any reason to hold this up. It's interesting, listen to the clerk tell the story about, about word getting out there. Uh, it reminded me, last fall, my family went to Disney World. Now, we did the same thing five years ago. We had no trouble getting a pickup for, nine, you know, for eight people to go to Logan. This year, this past fall, I couldn't find anybody <laughs> at first, and that's because the people I was calling who had used before, oh, no, we can't go in Everett now because word's out. 
Yeah. I never thought, never even considered that as being the issue. But, um, you know, this is, this is a community type of business where, yeah, people do talk amongst themselves. It's all they got time to do when they're not, when they're not working with a customer is to talk amongst themselves. So I think it, it's important that we do get this in place. And again, we can amend and, and we can make amendments as we evolve the taxi ordinance if we see that there's language or something in here that's relevant to this. But if this has been reviewed, we, uh, I know the clerk has done uh, a considerable amount of work on it. The city solicitor has reviewed it and given it and, and um, given us her blessing, for lack of a better term. Um, I think this is ready to go. Um, So, I mean, I'm, I'm prepared to, to, to motion that for this favorable action to the city council. I'll second that. We know that when it gets before the council, we're still gonna run into questions from them. The, easy, the simpler we keep this, I think at this point, the better. Okay. And do we get, I just wanna know, did we get this out to everybody yet for the council to read and review? Yeah, they've had it a couple of times, but they'll get the final one, I'm, mm -hmm. I like to I'm a stickler the on that. So this way that we, they can't say they haven't had a chance to read it, so if we can get it out before I'm a stickler on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I've seen this before. That's why December. I just want to make sure that we don't have no one. Yeah. <laughs> just to make sure no one can say that we didn't get it. So. No, I agree. All right. Absolutely sounds good. Absolutely agree, Council. Thank you. Okay. Motion then for favorable action. We throw it out to the uh, City Council with favorable action and uh, on for the uh, 24th of April. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? We have referred it out. And last but not least. Yes. All right, item number three. This ordinance amending section 1 8 general penalty. <laughs> Could I? You're looking for the who? city solicitor? Oh, yes. <laughs> Can I ask the city solicitor to come forward, please? Yep. First. Sergio Canelio, Assistant City Clerk. Um, if, if I may, real quick, just, sorry. Uh, I know I was telling you something on the livery and the taxi license. I was a section above where I meant to be. 18-149 actually states that uh, residential stickers, the following vehicles are not eligible under this ordinance, and it says taxi, cab, and vehicles bearing livery licenses. I knew it was there. I was a section above where I meant because I printed it out before for the parking enforcement. So if they have stickers, they're illegal stickers. They are not supposed to park overnight. I knew that the ordinance was there. I just I missed it, just so you know. Uh, Thank if you. I, if I may, just a quick question. Um, were you here when we, we adopted uh, 1.8? Oh, yeah. Okay. Do you remember why we did, we did that? I, ca I kind of remember, and, and this might be wrong. But I kind of remember that the reason we adopted that to be 1.8 is because we had a lot of our ordinances that had money specified on them for the fines. Mm. We had a lot of problems with the courts. And that's why we went with the up to $300 on section 1.8, saying that the court could then go in and interpret it to be whatever, they, $25 or $50 or whatever. Do you recall that? It was um, for the non-criminal disposition, so it was for the tickets, for the court enforcement tickets. Uh -huh. um, and so what the trend was, um, our municipalities across the Commonwealth was to give it, um, you know, in steps: um, first offense, second offense, and so on. Um, the courts weren't really getting involved in the in the non-criminal municipal code enforcement tickets. Um, at that time, they kind of shied away from it. They didn't really want it, the district courts really didn't want to be involved, so they really left it up to the cities. Uh, and then when you, in the very beginning, when you would go over there, when, when um, a resident would want to appeal their ticket, when, when they first started the whole thing, they would go over to the district court just to appeal the non-criminal ticket, and they were being told they had to report to probation, that they were doing a probable cause hearing. Yeah. So it was just a, a cluster of misinformation. Um, chapter 40U had been passed in the meantime. Chapter 40U is, um, the new and improved non-criminal tickets. It's what our code enforcement does right. now. Uh, we have our own hearing officer. She had to go and be trained by the state to be the hearing officer. Uh, so there is 
flexibility in terms of how you can ticket. However, you cannot go above the three hundred dollar max. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much, and members for allowing me that. Anybody? Do we have a copy of the changes that were, are being proposed? Yes, I'm sorry. I, th I thought you already had them. Hey, you can, you can hold on. I, I missed that when I grabbed <clears> up the agenda. So, so just so you know, the, the, the biggest change on the bottom, it says that um, it gives the enforcing agent the authority to find in, not, in the amount not to exceed the, the maximum uh, on the first and every subsequent offense is what it is. So it, uh, if you saw, the preamble's already written in there also. Uh, kind, of give, kind of gives you a little explanation of why, why it was asked. Uh, this comes from the code enforcement office. They, they see this a lot more, though I do use it. I, I also find off of this um, very occasionally, but I do, um, because many of our offenses are actually dictated by state law. But um, it, it's something that they, they're looking for uh, for the most part. They're finding many egregious violations at the beginning. You know, people just don't care. Uh, though they don't have that all the time, but it's, it's, it's for those specific cases that are so egregious at the beginning that they'd like to be able to uh, find at a higher, higher rate instead of being the, the 25, 50, 100 in, in, in that uh, increment. So this was the explanation from the building department ISD, so. Who makes the determination of what would require more than a minimum? So it'd be the enforcing agent, so whoever that is. So if I, I go out to a, we'll say a motor dealer just as an explanation, and I feel that they've been totally uh, disregarding all of our laws and rules, I could find higher than 25 at the first time. So ISD, uh, Frank, uh, Code Enforcement Nuzzo, so Mr. Soper, or any of the agents. So that's, it gives them the, the leeway and the authority, if and I'm not if, mistaken. And if I may just insert um, my humble opinion. They also, there's a check and balance there too because the property owner or the ticket holder can always appeal the ticket and the, the, the check and the balance is that the hearing officer um, you know, can reduce or dismiss the ticket. I, I'm, my only concern with this, I mean, I think, I, I understand that the, the, the intent, but my only concern is that without particular criteria that spells out the exceptions, the risk of somebody taking advantage of the exceptions and finding more when it may not be necessarily the case, um, I, I, I just have some concerns with that decision being made in the field uh, without some type of criteria governing exactly where, you know, what, what defines an, an egregious situation. Um, you know, what, what type of examples are code enforcement running into that they feel the need to, as a first find, the original intent, and I understand we, we were mirroring it with, with, the, um, the, uh, uh, with what's been going on with the state, but the intent to start small and work up was to more or less give a lower cost alternative to a warning um, I just would like, I'd feel more comfortable if there were criteria that the people were going by to make that decision. Um, and then they have the flexibility whether to, to go that route or not. Just arbitrarily giving them the authority to do that without anything that helps us define um, what is egregious. I'm just a little concerned about that. I, I don't think it's an issue where anybody that's currently working in this area would abuse it. Mm -hmm. I'm in no way at all suggesting that. But that's not the issue. The issue is the potential that it could be by somebody else of a lesser moral character. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the reason why you spell these things out, to make sure that somebody else who may have a problem with a particular homeowner or a business might go back in and say, well, no, this is worse than normal you, you follow what I'm saying? I just, I just would like a little more meat to spell out where, where the except, what, even some examples of what an exception might be. Um, the average resident 
even gets a $25 fine. They call us. I've heard people, I've had my ear bent off by, you know, how unfair I pay taxes, blah, 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 blah. And I understand where they're coming from, but I also understand the city has to maintain, um, you know, a nice community. You know, the problems have to be addressed. People cannot, are not allowed to just let problems fester that affect everybody else. But I would really feel more comfortable if we had something more definitive. Is that a possibility that we could do that? Just, I'm not trying to make it tougher, yeah. but when you say an auto business that's- got I was just problem, using, because it's oh, no, what no, I, that's no. what I deal and, with. And you really, there's nobody here from code enforcement, so that kind that's, of puts I had to use, I didn't want to use one of their, yeah. you know, examples, because yeah. I, I don't work there, so I, I didn't want to guess. You, <laughs> based on what you've, been, what you've seen yourself in this position, have you seen any situations, not no one know companies obviously. Yeah, no, no. Can you think of any any situations where the city has repeatedly told you've repeatedly told them something has to be a certain way and they're not adhering to it? That you've had to go in and find them. Yes, and I, that you might potentially me, me have specifically? To find them more. Yes. Please. I have. I, I've had with motor dealers specifically. Usually usually with I mean I usually do the minimum and let me just state that I use that example. It's a bad example because I, I am dictated by state law on that one. And there's a minimum of 200 and a range all the way to 1,000. I actually have the leeway at the first offense. I don't have a, a one, two, three step. It's not dictated by 1-8. It was a bad example. I'm sorry. It was the only one that I, I've had to deal with. That's why I used it. But so in our, in our case, it's someone that is constantly having uh, way too many vehicles on their lot, if we're going to use my example, no parking for customers, in allowing um, their uh, cars for sale or even uh, customers parking on our street and they're if dictated by our rules. So if it, your lot is allowed 30 vehicles, it's not 30 cars for sale, it's 22 for sale, four for customer, four for um, uh, the employees. So, and then instead they have 30 vehicles for seal and everyone else is on the street and now you it's, especially in this city and you know we'll just use little areas say when near where we live i mean it's very congested if you have a motor deal at the top of the street and you have all two three families already it's congested with vehicles and now a business is making you know not utilizing the parking they're supposed to selling more vehicles and now that's going into the into the residence it's calls that i i get calls on, I mean, weekly lately. Mm -hmm. So that's our example. But I would say for code enforcement, I mean, if, if the barrel is up a little bit, you can get a $25 fine. I don't know if you know, yeah. if, you, if it's too full. So that's the, but the same guy that has, I mean, just, it's just, their house is a total disaster is gonna get the same $25 fine. I, I think that's where, the, where they're, they're going with it, you know. You, and then, see that too, and I understand it, but see that's where it raises a question to me because that doesn't happen overnight. So what has occurred, so the question that comes in my mind when we're given the authority to make that decision is to why weren't they fined at the minimum level when they started seeing the problem start, which in which case if the problem isn't taken care of then it would be up to the $300 level. Right. I just the, the wanna, example that they used um, when they were discussing it Jim Soper, when, they, when he was discussing it with Sergio and I, it was the illegal rooming house. Right. You have, you know, a, um, a single family home that has a kitchen, a bathroom, and eight bedrooms, you know, keyed lock rooms. Uh, and some of, the, some of the residents in this illegal lodging house don't even have access to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what they find. In well, see, that's spelling that out as an exception. And that's yeah. one thing yeah. is, is where I feel more comfortable. But the Did state sanitary code, too, is so broad that they literally have to, and, and it's a policy decision. It's not, you know, my call to tell you how to write the ordinance. Yeah. I can just tell you it's legal or not. Well, that's all. Um, but so mainly interesting. The state <laughs> sanitary code is so broad that it might take them a while to kind of go through it and say, you know, maybe this could be an exception or this could be an exception. And don't forget uh, other agents, other agencies use it so I'm using mine as an example motor dealer was bad but for everything else I have to use 1-8 uh, for lodging houses for repair shops for uh, certain other ones mm -hmm. uh, now that you'll be putting under taxis and uh, livery under us so that there's still a licensee you know you're the licensing I'm your agent if there's an issue I'll be finding under 1-8 mm -hmm. so if you're defining it specifically towards code enforcement It'll affect Board of Health, myself, and other agents that have to utilize the same 
um, ordinance. And I think that's why we left it a little broader. I understand your concerns, but I, I, I think that's why we left it a little broader. I just don't want to see the this potential situation where a person gets um, fined more than $25 because the barrel is up a little bit, uh, because the person that wrote it felt justification doing exception because of other things that may not be you know, combined to it. And really, that's the only reason why I'd ask that we could spell out the exceptions a little in a little more detail. I don't, it's not that I don't trust the, you know, the agent in the field to make that call, but without specific criteria, as we've been going through with the staggered fines, the potential, and that's again is where I'm, where I'm working from, is the potential that, uh, for abuse is there. And if, there's, if it's spelled out, it minimizes that potential. You know, we always want to think that we've got people working at the best, in their best interest. And I, and I sincerely believe our code enforcement people do. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not what we write. We don't write on ordinances for the people in the job today. We write the ordinance so that people are not able to abuse the job tomorrow. And that's, the, that's really my only concern. I'm not opposed, I'm not so stuck on it that I would not vote in support of this. I just would like to see a little tweaked a little bit, that's all, if, you, if it's possible. Would you like to see specific examples of egregious or just tighten up the language, kind of give a criteria to the term egregious? You mean examples in the ordinance, putting it in the ordinance versus the... Um, you, you might have a 30-page ordinance. <laughs> Yeah, I know. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Could I uh, could I ask a question on the I've solicitor? Got to think about that for a second. I'm yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay. Uh, of the uh, enforcing agents that we have, uh, and which are many in, in the city, all in different areas, don't they have tickets that they give out also? Correct. Are the tickets have a list of no left hand turn or what, what, you know empty rubbish or whatever the, uh, a yes. list of violations that they have? Yes. So then could, in my to you, Serge? Yes. Um, couldn't you come up with a list of violations for your section, like a ticket, instead of just going out and saying, I'm going to give you a fine? Couldn't you give them a ticket? Do you have, a, do you have yeah, tickets? Well, just so you know, yeah, the current ticket book is, is quite generic. It's, everyone uses it. Um, even the police uh, department uses the same one. There's only like eight little boxes to check, and then the ninth is other. And I use other most of the time. Uh, and, but I write in, uh, just, just sorry to interrupt, I, I write in a specific ordinance or state law when I fine. Yep. So I'll use 1-8 or whatever ordinance they're violating if, it, if it's a council uh, motor dealer rule or law. Uh, that's what I write in there. And then I, I come up with the violation. Like I said, I use um, state law for uh, some of them, but I would write 1-8 and $25. Could, could we get a, a copy of every ticket that's given out? Not every, I mean, of, of the form of every ticket that's given yeah. out by enforcement agents? I know that Inspectional Services that's now different. uses um, portable right. handheld uh, oh, yeah. okay. printers, yeah. Yeah. and then they print out. So they probably it's probably now more um, individualized, where when they're printing out, they're only printing out the, the right. exact yeah. violation rather than a list of all the... I think I have I have a couple books in the in my office. I'll bring up a book with some tickets. I'll void them out okay. so you can see them. Okay, Councilor Sani. Thank you. I know a while back when I first started on the council, there was an officer from the police force that was working on rewriting the book, and then it got stopped. Yeah, yeah. we don't. It's it's not even um, valid anymore because the most of the enforcing enforcement um, agents have handheld devices. And, and so they just do the tickets right there. So on the handheld, are they picking up what the old ticket book was? It's the ordinance. The ordinance. Or the state sanitary code or the whatever. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're much more involved and they, when they can type the it in, it's in a main database and they can print out each, each is, ordinance. Is the police yeah. working with that too? Those? No, police actually use uh, the for those book. tickets. So I, I go to court on any non-criminal, non-code um, enforcement. Uh, so marijuana, the soliciting without a permit, all, all of that, I go to court in, in front of the magistrate and fight on the city's behalf. So the, when the police write, they use the same book as I do. Okay. Just so, so maybe, you know. like they just mentioned, they want to have a copy here so we can take a look, see what's... Yeah, I, I have a book yeah. downstairs. I'll, I'll bring it up. Right. I have to answer. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think giving some thought to what your question to me, because I, again, I had to really think that out for a second, because you're right. We don't want a phone book for an ordinance. Um, but perhaps a, a, a definition of egregious, 
spelling out the particulars. And, and uh, let, me, let me know what you think about this. And possibly in the, in the, in the case of those exceptions, the agent filed a, a separate report. Something to justify the, in writing the, the need to find higher than what they normally would. This way here, just the fact that you, it's, it's, it's forcing them to have to be respond, you know, report it and, and justify their reasoning, um, it gives us a safeguard against potential, and again, I really say potential abuse. The last thing I want is anybody watching this to think that I have any issues with, uh, with uh, the ethics of any of our code enforcement. I do not. Uh, I've seen what they do. They've gone to work on, on problems I've well dealt with. I have no issues. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that if we're going to be opening this door, we have some type of safeguard. Okay. Is that is that a possibility? Of course. Yeah. Okay. And they always they Sounds take pictures of every violation that they cite. Um, they're required to do that too. So um, mm -hmm. just so you know, they have. Only because it's a monetary a report, thing. Yep, but I think a written report is um, a good idea. And we may find out they already do written reports. I don't know. But, yeah, I'm not you know, sure. if, 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 if you've got a, a rooming house violation, which I completely agree needs to be addressed, you know, the, um, God forbid we ever have a fire in a situation like that, you know, we've, we've seen how that affects other, yeah. other, other communities. Um, but if they're going to take an issue that under the current ordinance would only be a $25 fine, and use the circumstances there to justify a three hundred dollar fine, mm -hmm. then at least we need to be able to back that up in writing mm -hmm. as to all the reasons why. And the photos are great, but a written report puts the representative on, on right there. Mm -hmm. And if there is any abuse, you know, then I'm, I'm the department heads come show in reviewing these 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 jobs, we'll be able to address that. Right. So that would be. So that's my answer. <laughs> Could we motion to, uh, would you have this ready for us the, at, at our next committee meeting, or do you think? Oh, yeah, next committee. All right, so if we could hold this over for one to one meeting. And I'll second it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's motion. motion to uh, postpone the release of this until after our next meeting. To hold this over uh, to the next meeting, uh, next uh, committee meeting, for the solicitor to have an opportunity to, um, you know, add a, defin a, def a definition and a reporting component. Also to the city, city solicitor. Yes. yes. Yeah, we're gonna work together. Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Aye.